Hi, I'm Ben Wadilla. Today on Saturday Mechanic, we're going to talk about replacing an axle, or as we call it, a half shaft. So today, we're going to talk about replacing the axle, or half shaft, as it's uh, commonly called. You might recognize this car from previous episodes. It's a piece of junk, but I have lost the title, so it's gonna stick around the shop a while and I'm going to use it for my demonstrations. Like I said, we're replacing the half shaft. That is the piece that lives between the transmission and the wheel on front wheel drive cars, and that transmits power to the wheel, but it also has other jobs. It has to transmit that power while living with the articulation of the axle and the rotation of the wheel, or the turning of the wheel. So that means it's got some joints. Here's the piece that we're gonna be replacing today. This is the side that connects to the transmission. This is the side that connects to the hub and the wheel, but there are two joints on either end. This one has quite a few degrees of rotation. There's a, it's actually a really nice joint in there that has a lot of degrees of free, freedom. This one is fewer degrees of freedom, but it also moves in and out, which is something that has to be in place so, to deal with the articulation of the suspension. The common failure points on these are actually these rubber pieces, the boots, this outside one is the one that tears the most. When it tears, the grease inside gets flung all over the inside of the wheel and the wheel well, and, and that's how, kind of how you know it happens. And, and when it tears, debris and road grime and all that stuff gets inside and it starts to degrade the bearings and the races and all, all the pieces of the joint that are important. Like I said, you'll see that, that grease inside of your wheel, but you'll also start hearing a clicking sound when you're doing turns. That's how you know these things are going bad. This piece, this is actually a remanu remanufactured component. You actually take the old part out, take it to the store, and they'll send it to a recycler. They'll take it all apart, clean it up, replace all the internal pieces, maybe do a little machining, and replace the boots, and send it back out for sale. So it's, it's actually really a, kind of a green part, if you will, but this one for this car, since they, made, they basically printed these cars, this was gonna be about a $40 part, which is really cheap. So with that, we're actually gonna start on the ground removing the axle nut. There are two lugs that are missing. I've been practicing on this car and uh, those twisted off. But the key thing that we're gonna do here is pull off this axle nut. The axle nut holds the axle onto the end of the, the, the hub, but it also compresses the bearings inside there. And we're gonna actually pull that off while it's on the ground. The reason we're gonna do that is because if we didn't, the axle would just turn and turn and turn and turn. So I've got this big socket here, this is a 30 millimeter socket, but you're gonna to need to probably buy a socket to fit your car. They're in this range, uh, 30, 31, something like that, close to that area. The retention system on the axle bolts is, can be a little bit different. Some of them have a channel that's cut in the side and then it's dented in to keep it in place. This one is compressed on either side so that it stays without rotating off the axle. But with a little bit of elbow grease, these will come off fairly easily. If they don't, you can always resort to air tools or big levers. Uh, but this one seems to be coming off pretty well. So I will finish taking this bolt off as well as these lug nuts. We'll pull the wheel off, put the car in the air. All right, so we got the car up in the air and I hate to tell you this, but all of these suspensions are a little bit different. So what you're gonna see here today might not apply to your car, but it's pretty close. The steps are pretty much the same. Some cars, you have to take the whole brake system off and disassemble pretty much the entire suspension in order to get the axle off. But this car is a little bit simpler. You can just take off two bolts here and fold the whole hub out and the axle should come out. We may have to pull out the tie rod or the anti-roll bar connection, but for the most part, we can leave the brakes assembled. We're gonna pull these bolts. We're also gonna put this, this nut back on so we can tap it with a hammer and push that back out. So we're gonna start, we're gonna try it this way first. It's a little bit harder to turn the wheel this way than with the steering wheel. So I'm gonna put a socket on here and loosen these bolts and then try to fold this whole thing out. I think this is the right socket. One. 
And while I'm looking at this, I think what I'm gonna have to do is pull off a bolt here that holds the hose bracket just to give us a little bit more wiggle room. I might have to go run and get a new socket for that. Let's put these back on. I'm gonna tap these with a hammer. Never tap the end of the bolt without a nut on the end. You will damage the threads. And I hate to say it, but since you're taking this apart, you are going to probably have to get an alignment afterwards. You can't do that at home. It's just the thing you're gonna have to do. You're gonna save a lot of money on the cost of the axle replacement, but you are, are gonna have to spend a little bit on getting an alignment afterwards. You could make marks on the bolts here to give you an indication of where everything was set and you could put it back in place and you could probably get 90% of the way there, but you're gonna be a little off when you're done with this, get an alignment. Let's loosen that bracket before we pull the last bolt out. There we go. These are the spots where you inevitably smash your knuckles. So pay attention to where your hands are in relation to your tools and the car. Before we even started on this, I doused everything down with a uh, penetrating oil. That makes the job a lot easier, especially on cars that are a little bit older. You'd be surprised what just a little bit of PB Blaster WD-40 does for your well-being and sanity. So we've got that off. So with those loose, you can pull this whole thing away. And it's a little bit wobbly, so you may want to pay attention on supporting it. But since we've got it loose, this inside joint is gonna start to move in and out. And you gotta be careful to not just yank it out because you want the whole thing to come in one piece. What we're gonna do is actually try and keep this a little bit together. And I'm gonna tap this end to unseat it from that side of the hub. Remember, try and keep this bolt on here and tap on that. And it should. slide out from the back side. Tap a little bit more. All right, let's see if we can't take this apart. All right, so we've got the inside piece free. Now it's a matter of the transmission side getting free. Sometimes you can just pull these straight out. This one looks like it's gonna be a little bit stubborn. So we're gonna actually have to pry it from the backside. But before we do that, we're gonna to need to get a piece to distribute the load. The last thing you want is to pry on that transmission case and crack it. So you get something to put on there and uh, protect the transmission case and distribute the load. All right, so we're gonna slide our pry bar back here against the transmission case in behind the joint. And we're gonna try and pry this free. What you're doing is basically pulling it. There we go. You're basically pulling it. Oh, almost lost it off the end. It's a little bit like pulling a socket off of, uh, off of your wrench. So here's our old axle. Now that we've got it out, we're going to show you how to replace it with a new one. Before we get going putting the new axle in, what I'm gonna do first is actually clean everything in here. We're dealing with pretty close tolerances on a spline shaft here and a spline shaft here. So it, it helps a lot to have everything clean. I'm gonna use brake cleaner to strip away any kind of junk or residue, any kind of rust that we've got in there. So I'm gonna lay that down on there, a little bit on here, and clean it out as best I can. Anytime you're replacing machine parts, it's a good idea to do this, especially when there's sealing surfaces involved. All right, so here's our new axle. You need to make sure to clean everything in this area before you put it in so you get a good sealing surface. Speaking of sealing surfaces, this edge of this surface is, is the primary sealing surface in that seal. So you'll want to lay down a bit of white lithium grease on the edge so that sealing surface is in tip-top shape. With that, we're gonna put this in. 
trick is to align it and then press it onto place can be tough. There we go. You can hear that seat just like that. So that's against the transmission case and seated on that circlip. Now the job is going to be get this spline shaft into the hub here, which can be tricky. Obviously you want to take off the axle nut. Compress the inner and rotate to align everything. Make sure to be careful with the uh, boots though. You, the last thing you want to do is tear a boot right as you're putting it in place. So put this new bolt on to hold it in place. You actually don't want to use this to pull it through just yet. You want to make sure everything is aligned. Get it in place before you tighten anything down. And I think that we're in pretty good shape here. So we can actually spin this down and start putting the whole suspension back together. Now I'm going to uh, take one of these bolts and put it into the strut just to make this a little bit easier to put it all back together. Got to start aligning it somehow. See if we can't get that in there. All right, now we're talking. Okay, so now because this outer flange is actually crushed a little bit, that provides an interference fit for the bolt. The idea is when you put this on, you don't want it to come off. So that interference fit holds the nut in place. Cars have different varieties of this though. Some have a a shaft or a hole in it with a cotter pin. Others have a slot in the axle nut that you, you pound a version of this flange into so it stays in place. This one is an interference fit though. So like I said, I'll throw my ratchet on there and tighten it down or do an initial tightening. How about that? Oh, oh there we go. So we'll torque that down when it's on the ground. But now I have to torque these bolts on the strut back on. And we're actually pretty close to getting this thing wrapped up that bracket back on. It's not the cleanest job in the world. You're probably going to get greasy. So definitely want some coveralls on or your filthiest clothes. So I'm going to tap these bolts into place. No harm, no foul on this side. And throw the nuts on. Tighten these down. It's very critical to get that axle bolt tor torqued down, especially in cars that have bearings that uh, require the tension of this bolt to hold everything together. So we've got this about torqued down to 130 pound feet. That's specific to this car. You have to check your service manual for your own. With that, this suspension is put back together. We're definitely going to need to go into alignment shop to get it sorted out uh, so that the car tracks straight and true. But now we can put the wheel back on, put the car back down on the ground. So with the car on the ground, now we can torque this axle nut down. This one is uh, 190 foot pounds, so you're basically going to be able to stand on your torque wrench. and set the load. That should finish this repair up for us. Take it for a test drive and make sure though before you go on any freeway cruises. That is uh, replacing the axle on this car. If you have any questions about the job you've seen today, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Mm -hmm.